Oh, hey. I didn't see it was, you guys were there. I was just stretching. Just kidding, I did. I was just showing off my muscles. They're so great. Hello. I want to welcome you to another one of these webinars. These are all, hi Nadia. Um, these are all spontaneously done. These webinars are um, done from a place of heart and not strategy. I believe that if I did it from strategy, I would block amazing moments from coming through. If I, if I had a way that we have to do it, if I said, okay, at this time we do this and at this time we do this, I wouldn't be able to fully be me and answer whatever questions come up and honor whatever excitement is coming through in my heart. Um, and uh, that can be the downside of planning. What if just the way that I get ready is by being with myself today and realize that I'm not even preparing? Um, or that I'm always preparing. Jennifer says the transmission is frozen. Is anyone else getting that? I just want to make sure that everyone else is, are you guys all, you're fine. Okay. So Jennifer, it's your computer. Everyone else is fine. So it's your computer, Jennifer. Because when one person has a comment that I'm frozen, I'm like, is that our fault? And then if everyone's going, no, I'm fine. I'm like, oh, Jennifer, it's you. So awesome. So, um, so every second is preparation for everything. <laughs> in other words, the way that I, I work on myself is by being with myself through meditation, through following my highest excitement, through letting go of heavy things, through moving towards what excite me. Even if there's something hard about it or challenging, that doesn't mean it's not still the most exciting thing. But by doing these things and enjoying each moment, whether it's painful or exciting or dark or um, euphoric, whatever it is, I'm here to be with that moment. And I've said this on stage numerous times and in my book, but I really believe we're not here to feel happy or at least aim for happiness. We're here to feel fully. And when you feel fully, you feel your heaviness, you feel your fear, you feel your nervousness, you feel your um, stress, you make room for yourself to expand because you're bigger than everything you've ever felt. You're bigger than everything you've ever felt. And the proof is everything you've ever felt has come and gone and come and gone in different ways and you still existed through all of it. You're still here and you're still fine. So you outlive the emotions. These emotions show up and when you're in them, you trick yourself into thinking these emotions are permanent. This is definitely my truth that I'm, I'm always like, whenever you're really sad, you're like, I'm going to always be like this. Or you feel lonely. I'm going to die alone. You're talking about, I'm going to die alone when you're like 28 or you're feeling like just angry. And you think when you're in that anger, you feel stuck because you trick yourself into thinking you're always going to feel like this and it's always passing. And so one thing that I've learned is even if it's something that feels overwhelmingly bigger than me, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a habit, whether it's a, a really painful feeling, it's temporary. And I'm not here to connect to the temporary and be locked into that temporary feeling. I'm here to be with me in all of it. And one of the outfits that I wear is sometimes stressed and sometimes the outfit is euphoric and and excited and everything else. So the more you feel your darkness, the more you allow yourself to feel what you consider, what you call your darkness, it's only called, it's only darkness because you're judging it, by the way. The world is judging it. The world thinks that you're not allowed to be sad. We tell people, if you're sad, you gotta get on pills. If you're stressed, we gotta, you must have a thing, get on a pill right now or get on it, you should get drunk. You're feeling stressed, go get drunk because it's not okay to just feel stressed. And so the world just kind of decides that we all agree that being happy is much better than being sad. So let's avoid sad and aim for happy. And we'll have this giant dark shadow that we're running from all day so that we can feel this false, not real happiness. But fulfillment is when you feel all of it. And so my practice is by feeling what I'm feeling. And today I felt a little bit off, but that's perfect. 
and, and it was here for my expansion. I feel much better now, but that offness was here for my expansion. So if you're here, first of all, one thing that's unique about you that you might not be able to see about you is your opening to new possibilities beyond the way that the world has taught you that it works. So there's people that are like a caterpillar that just believe I just am here to achieve or I'm just this victim and I'm just here to be the best of the caterpillars. And I decide that by having the best relationship and the best house and whatever. And as long as everyone looks at me and sees the best whatever, then that's great. And those people work in a strategic way to avoid getting hurt. They are working to avoid getting abandoned. They're working to avoid whatever. And they're constantly working their butt off forever. And then they achieve a bunch. And there's people that see that and they go, man, I wonder, or they see a victim person who's just constantly in a world of only blaming everything outside of themselves, but takes no responsibility for themselves. So the next phase is this cocoon or the crack in your shell where there's this like light coming in that says maybe the way you've seen the world is not your truth. Maybe the way that the world's prevented, presented itself, the way that school taught you, the way your parents said life works also might not be the truth. If you're here, you're someone who might be more advanced because you might be lost. Lost is more advanced than having all the answers. Because when you have only all the answers of how everything's going to work, lost can't creep in to make room for real new learning. So if your answers are based on how you've seen life work so far, and you're not allowing yourself to get confused and lost and scared and open. And it's in those moments that you really create a space for new information, new insights, new evolution, new growing, everything to show up. So people that are lost are much more advanced in my eyes and, and people that I'm much more excited to work with because they're making room for new possibility. People that are, oh, I already know how it works. They're kind of like, to me, the people that when you're driving with someone who is not, they won't ask for directions and they won't admit that they're lost. They're just constantly, we're fine. And they're doing loops around the same city a hundred times. And you're like, are you sure you're fine? And they're like, we're fine. And they're just continually, it's not until they finally go, okay, I have no idea what's going on, that they stop and they can ask someone for directions or they can type it into their GPS or they can pull it up on MapQuest, depending on which decade you live in. Um, and when they finally do that, new information can show up. So it takes being lost. Yes, lost is a good thing. It takes being totally lost to open up. Now the next step is to fall in love with that you're lost because the only problem with lost is that you think you shouldn't be lost. Your old story, your ego thinks that the problem is that I'm lost. So it thinks that lost is a bad thing. So it fights the fact that you're lost and it's constantly at war with the fact that you're lost and doesn't let this lostness come through so that new information can come in. So you're in this fight or flight place because you're in an argument with what is and your what is is that you're lost. Now, some people might have answers or new things and that's awesome too because eventually when you actually realize this place, this feeling, this guidance that's coming through actually has more answers for me than everything I've ever been taught outside, then you're starting to tap into your butterfly. And the more of a butterfly you are is based on how much more you listen to your intuition than outside of you. How much more, and I'm only here to point you to your intuition. I'm not here to get you to become like me. I'm here to show you, you have it. You have more answers than any seminar, any self-help book, anything can give you. And the real training that you want are the ones that teach you that you have those answers. Not the ones that teach you, here's how to do it. Here's how to sell something. Here's how to manipulate. That's just saying how they've done it. You don't want to do that crap. You want to hear this guidance. And the more you're in your heart, the more you're in your calling, the less you're going to ask outside people. Because a huge mistake butterflies make is when they feel a calling in themselves, they ask caterpillars what they should do. And caterpillars can't feel the thing that you're feeling. 
And remember, when a butterfly hangs out with a caterpillar, they have to move at the pace of the caterpillar because the caterpillar can't fly. So they have to cross the street at a much slower pace. When you're by yourself in a butterfly, you can fly much faster. So my first invitation is for you guys to be okay with where you are, no matter where you are, no matter where you are. So wherever you are, if it's stressed, if it's excited, if it's euphoric, if it's horrified, what I want to do is offer you to say, um, well, I'm right here, Jennifer. What I want you to do is say what you're feeling, whatever you're feeling right now. I want you to write down what you're feeling. First, just write that down. What, what I want you to do is write down your feeling. Are you feeling anxious, fulfilled, awesome? Are you feeling uh, scared, trapped? That's a great one. I'm feeling sad and confused, excellent. Give me more, let's do a few more. Worried, awesome. That's really, like to me, that's really advanced. I'm like, good, you're worried. Because you're owning you're worried. You're not just worrying, you're saying I'm worried. That's very different. Unconscious just worries. Conscious goes, I have worry in me, right? So I'm uncertain, afraid to see my family, feeling joyous and eager, optimistic, unsure, happy and relaxed, confused, killer. Now, awesome. I love reading these. So now check this out. What if your lostness is actually only inside you? What if your trapped is inside you? Trap because your circumstances aren't going well, but really your circumstances only exist inside you. If you close your eyes, your circumstances exist inside you. They're in your mind. They're thoughts. They're blocking thoughts. They're different things. So what I want to do right now is have you feel what you're lost about. Feel, just feel that lostness inside you. So go ahead and feel it for a second. So everyone just take a second and close your eyes and feel every whatever your emotion was lost or excited or whatever, anxious, unsure, trapped. And honestly, go to a deep place and notice where you feel it. Where do you notice you feel that mostly? And go ahead and write that too. In my head. Stomach, stomach, heart, chest, throat, feel trapped in my chest and shoulders. Excellent, stomach. Now, excellent, keep them coming. Gut, head, awesome. Yeah. Now what you're already doing is so advanced because you're already acknowledging you. The more worried you are, the more you've been worried about outside. You think it's about you, but it's really what they'll think about you or that you'll lose your job that they will give you or you know, you're know you stressed. And the more you feel good, the more you're working on inside, right? So you'll notice that there's a correspondence to a lot of the answers, right? If it's head and throat, you probably have been thinking because your circumstances outside of you aren't going the way you want. And that's only because there's a very small story of you that thinks your circumstances should go a certain way. When meanwhile, a lot of our circumstances are falling apart to make room for much better stuff, much better us's, much better new circumstances, much better life in result of your old circumstances falling apart and your new circumstance that you are. So the only reason you stress is you've handed more attention to outside and what the outside thinks of you and what you're going to get than what you are. So it's a great place to start with just what you feel. So I'm gonna show you something first, and this is what we did yesterday. There'll be a couple things, I guess, that repeat because it's coming up right now to do this, and I know there's a lot of new people here. And if you did it yesterday, we should be doing this every day. So yes, Marie, absolutely. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to write out first, Some this is just something to get you to start this. One of the problems is not this thing in this thought, it's your resistance to the thought. 
It's your resistance. It's you thinking this thought shouldn't be there. So really a thought's coming up and you're arguing with it. You're fighting it. Okay. So when you have a thought, you go, Oh, I shouldn't be having this and you stress up. So what I want you to do is love the thought instead. And how you're going to do that is you're going to say this out loud. This sounds crazy, but it really does do a lot. I want you to say whatever you're feeling or whatever you wrote and then follow it with, and I love that. So I'm scared to visit my family and I love that. I feel trapped and I love that. I'm, I'm, and then you're going to also write it here too. I feel in my head and I love that. I feel excited and I love that. I feel um reading your comments going back here feeling open in my heart i feel alone and i love that i feel uh shit came in late and i love that <laughs> someone came in late i'm going to let myself down and i love that this is great so just try that for a second i feel excited and i love that i feel uncertain and i love that i feel happy and full and i love that i feel unsure and i love that beautiful yes yes <laughs> I feel scared to say it out loud and my boyfriend is here. Well, I'm sure if he's here and he's supporting you, he loves that you're being open about your feelings. I'm hoping he is. I feel lost and indecisive and I love that. I feel not enough and I love that. I'm not sure how I feel and I love that. I feel fulfilled and I love that. I feel my head is going to explode and I love that. It is because we're going to go past your head. We're going to go into your heart. I feel scared to lose my job and I love that. I feel terrified to start my new business and excited about it at the same time and I love it too. I feel lost and lonely and I love that. I feel trapped and I love that. I'm afraid to visit my family and I'm not sure I love that. The more you're not sure you love that, then the more you're holding on to that fear to keep it there. As you keep that fear there, your resistance to it is what keeps it there. Check this out. If I want to get over this pillow, I have to actually pick it up because this issue pillow is not a part of my being until I say, I got to let go of this. But it's by letting go of this that I keep picking it up. So realize if you're trying to get over an old relationship, it's already not a part of you. Everything everyone else does is not a part of you. You just keep picking it up. So I feel afraid of my own power and I love that. I feel unsure and I love that. I feel old and I love that. Yeah, I'm about to make a big jump and I might screw it all up and I love that. I feel withdrawn and I'm afraid and I love that. I'm frustrated I can't get everything done and I love that. Yeah, because you have a belief that getting everything done is better. And by the way, that, you, that it's getting done through you and not other things are getting done when you finally stop doing those things. See, these are the problems that we have is really we have a false belief about everything. So, um, awesome. So... I want to know, I'm already crying and I do love that. Crying is a release. Would you rather be only nervous or would you rather be crying? Crying is the release of the old story. You're letting go. Anxiousness is you're scared to cry because you were taught by the world that crying is bad. But crying is just going to the emotional bathroom. Crying is just if you never pooped your entire life. Think about that. If you never pooped your entire life and then finally you do it when you're 40. You'd be horrified. You'd be like, what the hell's coming out of me? And you'd think who you are is the poop, but remember you're the butt, Kyle Cease. So what, what I wanna do is, first of all, after you guys wrote, <laughs> after you guys wrote, and I love that, I wanna know if there was any change in how you felt just from you loving it. So let me know about that too. Was there any change? Were you feeling lighter? Were you feeling a release? Excellent. Awesome. Anyone else? Lighter? Going in and allowing myself to feel the feeling. Some peach. Peace. <laughs> Steph felt a peach. Move from my head to my heart. I don't feel so identified with these feelings. Exactly. An honest acceptance of it did make me feel lighter. I felt like the problem didn't really matter. Hell yeah. Much more expansive. I felt worse because I'm not feeling like I love it. That's right, because you're not loving it. So, by the way, crying is not worse. Crying is better. So you're moving forward. So can you love where you are right now, Rain? Because it's a new moment. So can you just love that you're confused, that you're not feeling like you love it? And can you love it for real? Don't love it so you'll get rid of it. Love it. Let it sit there. Let that pain sit in you. It wants to be there. 
but you trying to push it away keeps it there. It's like a passing cloud and you're grabbing it when you're the sky, right? I feel more about today than tomorrow. Yeah, I, yes, that's good. Well, I'm crying and on my son's computer, not sure what my Minecraft symbol is. <laughs> what? Okay, guys, I have, have a great night. Be open and enjoy. I'm going to watch part seven of Deep Down and I love that. Oh, you're taking off? I have a funeral for the old story. I love that I don't feel like I love it. I love that it hurts. That is so much growth because most of us are used to being in resistance. Because do you notice that even though this feels lighter, it feels new, which means that your fear-based place that you felt in your head was actually maybe a little more familiar and as a byproduct, maybe a little more comfortable. Maybe familiar is a little more comfortable because you're used to your home being a place where you're scared, you're in debt, you're anxious, you're, you're unsure, you're uncomfortable, you're anxious. That's actually our home. And when you finally go to a place where everything's fine, all of a sudden you're scared. It'd be like riding a bike with the brakes on your entire life. And then finally we release them. You'd be so scared to move fast. You'd be like, I'm used to having resistance. I'm used to having a break. So that's what's going on, right? So I'm afraid of changing and I love that. I'm feeling good at acknowledging, I'm not good at acknowledging my feelings and I love that, correct, because correct. that's just a belief you have, Kristen. You're not not good, you just haven't been good because you didn't know what you know right now. I feel happy after 13 years plus of unpleasant stuff and I am scared that it will return. Right, I feel happy after 13 years plus of unpleasant stuff and I'm scared that it will return. So you have a belief that it'll return and you love that because it'll only return in your head. And by the way, the more you worried about it, the more you'll create it inside of you and the more you'll only match things that are like that scared feeling. When people close their hearts off, they invite more danger than people that open their hearts because people that are dangerous are scared of open-hearted people because those people are in their truth. Those people are in their power. And when people come and try to judge you, they're, they're scared to death because they're judging themselves through you. And when you're all love and you don't have any resistance to yourself, they're gonna be horrified. They can only attack closed heartedness because that gives them resistance to keep their egoic identity against it. So I'm learning to love that everything isn't okay and that it's okay. I love that you're a part of my path to being happy and in a loving place and I'm honored to be with you, seriously. And you're part of mine because this whole thing is for my growth too. I had food poisoning the last couple of days and I'm feel, I've been feeling off and I'm starting to feel back in the pocket right now. And it's funny because my soul says um, all the time, like, keep going, do this. And sometimes my ego goes, oh, I'm too tired to do an online workshop again and now I'm doing it with you guys. And I'm so happy I did. My poor team hears me go, oh, another one? And a Sunday, I want to sit on a Sunday and just watch TV. And now here we are transcending our emotions together. And I'm so glad that I, my heart said, now you still want to do this. You want to do this. You don't want to watch a Steve Martin movie again. Go do this. Go step into your heart. And so here we are. And I'm so happy to be with you. So I'm seriously, I'm all in the pocket because of you guys. Because of you guys playing with me and doing this and feeling your emotions, and we're transcending crap, and we're moving to the real world. This is the real world. The world of fear is where you, th you, this is where people call the real world. They go, I do my seminars, and people go, that's great, Kyle, but what about the real world? What about the world where I go back home, and all of a sudden, all my problems show up again? And to them, the real world, <laughs> and to them, the real world is where I sit, and I create a false fantasy of everything that could go wrong in the future, or I keep remembering everything that went wrong in the past. That's the real world to them. What also is real is something we never notice, that your heart's beating right now, that you're breathing. This is real. All the stuff you're nervous about is false. That's stuff you're creating. You're making that up right now. That's not real. This is real. It's real that I'm sitting here right now with you and that you're all here. It's real that we're talking right now. It's real that blood is pumping through your body all day. And you notice how much your, your, your breathing and your heart doesn't sit here and anticipate all that crap. It doesn't worry about what people will think of you. It unconditionally loves you while we keep abusing it, while we keep giving it crappy food, stress, all this stuff, right? So, 
connect with something that's real and let's avoid what's not. And let's not go to an addiction to escape that false real thing because that's false. We go into a fantasy in our head of how everything's gonna fall apart and then we just keep worrying about it, worrying about it. And then we totally create it because we worried about it all the way there. So let's talk about what's real here for a second because that's going to be the space for this fear because that fear is the little you when you were a kid trying to get love from your parents and they didn't give it to you the way you wanted. And now you're a grown up, and now you have the opportunity to be there for little you because when you finally love little you, it can leave. So every webinar we've done, um, I more and more want to put a little more treadmill work in. And what I mean by that is if you went to the gym and you just heard the guy talk the whole time, about how good a treadmill works, you would hear how fit you would get and you would hear how awesome it is, but you'll never lose weight until you're actually on it. And I'm talking and you're getting these concepts in your mind, but we gotta do some of the work that's the equivalent of actually getting on the treadmill because that's where the actual transformation is. So, so awesome. So I'm just kind of looking through your comments here as we're doing this. So now, so what is real? There's something that's beating your heart, right? There's something that's beating your heart. This is where we're connected. This place is where we all are real. There's something beating all of our hearts. And if we look here, we would stop hating different people. We would stop seeing different people as different people. We would get that we're all connected. There's something beating our heart and we would stop looking at the shells and deciding that you're different than me. We're connection at the heart. We're connection. We're love. This is what we are. And our job is to go, this is real. My heart is beating all freaking day. And it's not asking for anything in return. And meanwhile, I'm giving it beer or smoking or stressing or whatever, because I'm trying to get this person to like me, or I'm trying to get laid, or I'm trying to get a promotion, right? Hell yeah, David. I go to Orange Theory too. Um, so what I want to do is I want us to take a look at this thing that's beating your heart. There's something beating your heart, right? This is so huge that we start with this because most of us showed up with this how. How am I going to get this? How am I going to get that person? How am I going to get over this relationship? I want to go to a why, and a why is deeper. I want to know why I want to go there, and we learn by listening inside. There's something that's beating your heart right now. What's beating your heart? I don't know. You guys can call it whatever you want. Some people call it the universe. If you're an atheist, you can call it your intuition. You're just feeling just cells beating. If you're Christian, you can call it God. You can call it whatever you want. Just say, or you can just say, I don't know. And I love that. But something awesome is beating your heart right now, right? That's your soul. That's your source. That's you, right? All you have to do is take a second. And I want you to feel all the scared thoughts that you had. And I want you to tell for a minute, silently inside your heart about it. And then I want you to listen to what your heart says. Your heart's gonna tell you something. Actually, we're gonna go two, actually we're gonna go three minutes on this one. Saturday we did two at first. I wanna go through, I think this, this group feel, everything feels more, we're really in alignment here. So I'm in the pocket, you're in the pocket. I feel connected to you. This might be the ultimate webinar. So right now, what I want you to do is take a moment and focus on this thing that's beating your heart, whatever it is. And if you don't want to focus on that, just focus on your heart beating, okay? And it totally is. And so I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about the thing you're feeling or a thing that you're worried about a thing you're scared someone will think about you, a leap you're scared to take, something you're scared to let go of, a change in your life that's making you nervous, whatever it is. And you're gonna take three minutes and you're gonna close your eyes and you're gonna tell your heart about it, okay? And I'm gonna watch the time for you. So go ahead and go right now and then at, and listen to what your heart says too, because it's beating and just listen to it. So ready, get set. Go.
Time. So three minutes just passed. So far I've done this for an hour and a half today. Um, <clears throat> I wanna know from you guys what your heart said, what you're feeling now, what your heart said, whatever you wanna say. It's amazing how long three minutes feels. If you're doing something amazing, if you're doing something to grow, it's not even the length of a whole song. Your only love, my heart, that's lean in, trust, love. My heart said, I'm already okay. Stop letting your head get in the way of the, with the yeah buts. I'm already safe. It'll be okay. I'm in love. I am love. I mean, I said, take the leap. You'll freaking fly. Everything will be all right. To trust and surrender, to not worry about how it will all work out in the most amazing way. You're perfect the way you are. I'm, my heart said I'm too hard on myself. You're the most powerful when you leave. You're in your most powerful when you leave, so leave. My heart said that love is all around, just like oxygen. All I have to do is breathe in. My goods will be all right, and we'll go down the path they're meant to go down. I'm good enough. Yes, I heard it will be okay, too. I'm just reading. It's so fun to just read what you're writing. I'm reading everyone's. So one common thing I'm hearing is fine. Your heart doesn't care about the big things because those things aren't big. You're just on the channel that likes to worry. That's what the mind loves to do. It loves to worry. It loves to find a problem. It goes, I got to find a problem so that I can fix the problem that I created. That's how the mind works. Sadness is great. That's massive advanced. So the ego goes, I need action. So I'm going to sabotage something. So that's what relationships are for. Sabotage it so I can keep getting it back again. Screw it up so I can keep growing back. That's how the ego works. But really they're here so you'll go here. Relationships, friendships, all these things. All of life is really here so you'll go here. The problems outside are here so that you'll go here. That's what they're for. To make you go, oh, it doesn't work when I keep fixing it at the level of the problem. I have to keep going here. I have to keep, now it's a green juice. Um, I have to keep continually being here until this is my default setting. More and more, this is becoming my default setting. And it's like, I, I mentioned this yesterday too, but it's like Bashar says, there's a speaker named Bashar that I love who talks about changing channels. If you change a channel on a TV, think about it. When you're on channel two, all of the other channels exist in the room. They exist right there, but you can only see what you're tuned into. So when you're on the problem channel and why everything sucks, you're going to only find other people who think everything sucks. You're going to only find why everything doesn't work. You're going to find your lack and you're going to keep thriving off of it. Meanwhile, channel 100 of why everything's perfect, how to make tons of money, how to find abundant friends, how to have whatever is also here, but you're not on that channel. Most of us think we're just the channel, but you're the remote control. And when you go to your heart, you start to become the remote control where you can go to channel 100 or channel 1000. So your job is to change channels. And when you go to your heart and you go to channel 100, you don't even notice the problem channel. You're just on channel perfect, channel things are possible, channel possibilities. Because if you just did that with your heart for three minutes, if you just did that in your heart for three minutes, what would happen if you did it for an hour? What would your day be like if you started that with an hour of your heart connection? How much more 
would you bring to the world? How much better would your advice be? How much would you have to not write a second draft? How many things would you not take on because you're moving from here? How much crap would you not notice because you're here and you only connect with things that meet you here? How many amazing things are available if you're living here first? But most of us wake up and go right to the TV or right to Facebook and go right to here. That's what those things are designed for, to keep you here so you'll buy crap you don't need. Because if you think you're not enough, then they can show you the product will make you enough. But if you get your this, you immediately start to lose your addictions too. Because this is the space of all connection, love, and freedom. And when you're in your heart, you can feel connection and freedom at the same time. David, I want to I just add to that. You don't need to purge your crap. You need to connect here, and the crap will fall off. Yes, do that. You can feel a way to get there is to let go of like get off Facebook and everything. But I'm telling you, you give yourself an hour of this and you will crave less neediness. You will crave less addictive things. You'll be here and you won't be owned by outside as much because you have here because really all you're trying to get outside of you is love. But when you go here, you go, oh, I am love. This person can do some amazing stuff. This person here can create. This person can shift things. This person can love. And just saying I am enough each day repeatedly will clear a lot of stuff out, but you got to feel it experientially. I'm not talking about just saying that because you can say that and still feel the denial. That's not quite getting on the treadmill, but it's something. But I just want to offer you the idea of going beyond it. Here are ways to go beyond your old story. One is to do that. Feel your heart. One is to, yeah, and another one, Debbie just said it, like get off of those things. And David said, purge those things, get off of Facebook or minimize your, your social media. Say I'm only going on from noon to two or something like that, or I'm not doing social media after 6 p.m., whatever it is, right? The next one is, I'm touched, Krista, that's awesome. Thanks for opening up to us and opening about your feelings, that's awesome. Um, just like, feeling this meditation. Another one is creating. So really quick, I would love for you guys to write down and also feel free to type here. What are things that you could do to transcend the BS old story of your limitation that you had just so you could get love from your parents when you were little kids? One is meditation. Another one is let go of something that feels heavy, right? There's probably a hundred things we could say. Yeah. So I want you guys to think of them and we can write them down here on the comments and then all these ones that come up, you can write them on your own paper too. If you're sitting there with a pen and paper or you, you can write it into your phone, whatever. I want you to have a list of things that are your transcending your old head story and moving you into your heart. So you just experienced one was feel your heart. So I promise you feeling it and for an, an hour, feeling it for three minutes did something, right? So What's another one? There's, there's feel your heart. There's uh, music and moving my body. Absolutely. Spend time in nature. Hell yeah. Nature isn't full of the news scaring the crap out of you just so it can sell you a Gucci bag. Nature. Exactly. Journal with words. Yes, you're getting your feelings out. That's what journaling is. That's why I make a video every day. It's me journaling verbally. That's awesome. Um, going outside, nature. There's a reason. There's a reason nature, we were supposed to be in that, I think. Like it was just set up for us. And then we all went in houses and watched TV that showed footage of nature. <laughs> so we do a lot. Oh, I'm going to watch this movie. But I got off a, I got off at the airport. I got off and I got on a shuttle and the shuttle had this gorgeous footage of like Egypt and, you know, all these naturey places and beautiful rivers. And I'm thinking you can also go there instead of watching this footage to relax you on the way back to your commute to LA. Bike riding in remote areas, play with kids. Listen to Kyle every day, exactly. <laughs> Kevin said, you mean Adam and Eve didn't have a condo and Wi-Fi? That's what it started with. It, God said it first, let there be Facebook. Um, letting go of these things can take a while. I've been letting go of things. Yoga, yeah, stay in your light lane. Spend time with my dog. So. People, as you're reading these, feel free to art, creativity. That's huge. 
that's huge. Go write a song if you're a musician. And if you don't, if not that, like write out what you're thankful for. Right. I mean, there's so many millions of ways to do it. Laugh, really laugh. Watch something actually funny. Um, make soap. Yeah. <laughs> I love how weird that was. And then someone else was like, yeah, making soap. Like we're all like, that's going to be like the angle all of a sudden. Second half is me like having to figure out how to make soap and trying to show you it. Um, I love my dog and can't wait to see him tonight. Make love. Yes. Good idea. Take another crack at meditation, given all these three minutes stirred up. Yeah, and we're going to do that in a minute. We're going to go farther. Make soap. Make your own deodorant. Use <laughs> Fight Club reference. Oh, is that what that's from? I haven't seen it forever. So David's a little horny. We Someone from the last one yesterday's would have been perfect for David. Because there was one person that said at the last one, every time I meditate, I want to have sex. I'm like, I want to introduce you to David. So make an effort to ride horses. Um, oh, awesome. Yes. Good. <laughs> Maybe she was who was on yesterday. Um, awesome. So these, that isn't fair when you're single. You get, there's more opportunities when you're single. You get on a dating site. You can have 10 people at the same time if you're single. <laughs> well, they can. They might have to be creative. Right. Ooh, kissing a new person is lots of fun. Right, Marie? Exactly. Oh, boy, this is getting weird. Meditating in horny.com. Is that already there? Someone's buying it right now, I know. Watch, no one's responding because everyone's racing to it. What are you doing tonight, Marie? Try being married for 11 years with kids. Sex is hard to schedule. Well, be single. I'm kidding. <laughs> Christy is cracking. Christy's not here. Um, but she will be watching this. Um, um, awesome. Yeah. No, I, I'm not. Totally. Get on a dating site. If you're single, get on a dating site. If you want to, by the way. I'm totally just going with everything now. Yeah, do that. I'm realizing Kyle said. So, all right. Make sex a priority even more than dinner. All right. I'm going to, let's see if Christy's in on that for me. Um, just immediately. No. Uh, the kids will starve. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I didn't know we were going to to go here. This is really great. Um, we're kind of stuck on the sex thing now. So that's great. So we've discovered that the answer is sex to transcend. No, but I want you to talk also about what you can do inwardly. And it's not only sex with yourself. I want you to talk about how you can transcend it too, because this is about your creativity. Have you ever had where you're writing something and you write for a few hours and you forget you're even hungry? You forget to go eat, you forget everything because you're in this weird zone where you just feel awesome. That's where we wanna live. So every time from now on you catch yourself saying, how do I get over that person? Or what do I do about this job interview tomorrow? Or how do I get these people to like me? Your answer should only be the things that you wrote down on the list, like meditate, create, sing, you know, paint, exercise, feel your heart, right? Let go of what feels heavy in your life. Move towards something that excites you. Make a step forward. Listen to music, awesome. I'm sorry, Jana. Um, learn the ukulele. And, but the next hour will be very no sex talk in the next one. Just don't let her scroll up to earlier content. Um, all right. So now, pretty crazy. So now really quick, just so I'm with you guys, I want to know how you feel right now. Tell me about how you're feeling right now. Are you feeling anxious still? Are you excited? Are you feeling good? Lighter? Feeling good? Open? Lighter? 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 Awesome. Awesome. Expansive. Full. Lighter. Yeah. Lighter excited. So you shifted that. It's been 49 minutes since we've been on. So you're, you're always, you know, and we didn't even start talking about your fears till 10, 20 minutes in. So you're, you're really only a few minutes away, maybe a half an hour away from when you feel the most doomed ever, from transcending it, just from being with yourself, from, from being free, from being connected, being okay with yourself, right? 
this is awesome. So look at everyone's feeling really great. And I want to just honor that. Like we're all doing that together and we're all in the same frequency. And I'm just so excited about that and so honored. And I'm telling you guys, I feel the same way too. And I'm just honored to be with you. This is a great way to spend a Sunday. So thank you, Shannon. Yeah, we're all in this together. How about that? That you're a community. Here's a, here's a tip, by the way, when you're off of here is that we have a community for people that are doing the work, the people that have come to our events or come on our webinars. EOL community on Facebook is killing it right now. People are making daily videos. They're talking about their feelings. They're, I talk about some stuff I'm going through that I don't talk about publicly. Um, go to the Facebook, EO, so it's EOL community. No space, by the way, EOL community, no space. And you can add yourself and there's a community there. Yeah, it is, it's really amazing. And you guys joining will keep the support going for the people that are there because every once in a while they're gonna feel like falling off and you're gonna be like, no, this happened to me, this happened to me. And I'm going to make a point to always, every time I do an event, to bring these amazing open-hearted people in to meet each other. And by the way, if you write the word Grimstall on that site, G-R-I-M-S-T-A-L-L-L-L, -L -L -L, it's four L's. Is it four L's, Carrie? I think it is. Yeah. It's a word that I just made up. But if you write the word Grimstall, that means I'm single and I'm only looking for a conscious, expansive, amazing relationship. So if you go on to EOL community and you write Grimstall, G-R-I-M-S-T-A, four L's, it's just me being stupid. But if you write that there, you're saying with four L's though, Trisha. Yeah. It's just a it's just a random word. Yeah. Melissa Conroy's got it. If you go in there and write it, you will be able to tell the 2,000 people that are in the EOL community that you're single and you're only looking for expansive conscious meetings. Um, yeah, that you're looking for expansive conscious meetings and you're only interested in possibly hanging out with or dating someone who will call you on your bullshit and take you beyond yourself, not just someone to coexist with you as a way to block yourself from your heart. You're here to expand in yourself. That's what a relationship really is for, is to, for you to meet more and more of who you are. And you want people that can see beyond what you can see about yourself. Yeah, so... Go in there and type Grimstall and watch a bunch of people start hitting on you. So um, can you do one for girlfriends that are married? No joke. <laughs> well, um, I just write that, I guess, and we'll see. But then say I'm also married, but it's fine. I don't quite know the... Oh, oh I see, I see. <laughs> oh, I see. Got it. Yes. So say Grimstall, but as friends. I'm sure that's fine. They'll get it. Even just as friends. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It doesn't have to only be sexual, right? But that was originally intended for relationships. So we're gonna do a second longer heart connection in a second, but first I wanna answer one of the questions someone asked me here. Sometimes I can't tell if I'm running towards something that will make me grow or just keep me occupied and distracted. Great question, here's how you know. If you're asking that question, it's here to keep you occupied and distracted. Because when you're actually growing, you know it. You feel weightless, you feel expansive, you feel that it calls to you. And there's a lot of things, like for instance, do you think that this event that we're doing right now, is Jennifer Ziddle still on here? Say hi on the comments on the side here if you're awesome. So Jennifer, do you think that this event is here and it's making you grow or is it keeping you occupied and distracted? Right, so you see how you can see it? You can actually understand that right now. So this event is actually for sure causing you to grow. And you know because you're falling into your body more. I have a rule in myself that if I'm justifying something in my life that I don't want it. Because the people in my life, Dan and Carrie are on my team and I never ever ever say, you know, well they're good because of this and this and this is a way to keep them. They're, they're amazing and they align and my body can just feel that we need them on the team and the world and the team is better because they're in it. And they're each amazing co-leaders in their own hearts and they bring that to the team. But I would never justify why having them. 
right? So if I catch myself, so if you're in a job and you're saying like, yeah, well, it does get good medical or I'm supposed to get that promotion later, that's what, here's what that is. You're actually ignoring what your heart wants and you're trying to make sense out of it. So you have to go to your head to make sense out of why you're there and why this is happening, right? So if you are trying to justify something, often that might mean it's not your highest you because the highest you, you never have to explain it. I don't ever explain to anyone why I'm dating my fiance. I never explain to anyone why I live where I live. I don't explain these things because I don't feel embarrassed about it. I don't feel it's out of alignment because I don't have judgment for it myself. So I don't know if that answers you, Jennifer. Um, if you want, you can write a follow-up on here. Yeah, David, that's true. Relationships might take work, but there's relationships that take work because your heart says, I want this. And there's relationships that take work because you're horrified of losing it. And those are two very different things. Awesome. If you're doing something because you're horrified of losing it, let go of it. I was in... Um, Awesome. Kevin, can't wait to see you, man. Have a great night. Um, yeah, so I'll ponder a bit about a follow-up. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, feel into it, what, however you want. A few years ago, I ended a relationship with someone that I really missed. I really missed her. Now, my soul knew it wasn't a good relationship for me. My soul knew it was toxic. There were a lot of times I was totally miserable in it. I, I didn't feel that I was the highest me in it. But when we broke up, oh my God, it was like an addiction. It was a drug. I wanted her back so bad. There was this void in my heart that I felt that I really believed only she could fill, which is why I knew I cannot call her because she would just be filling an addiction. And if she fills an addiction, then that void won't be filled by me. It'll be filled by her. And I will constantly be powerless by her because she's the void filler. So if I need something, not because it expands me, not because it's my calling, not because I love it, but I need it like it's air, then I'm scared of being abandoned or something. And that's not the reason to do it. Instead, I have to let that thing go and let my heart fill up with myself in time. Let my heart fill up with my heart. Let my heart fill up with me. Let my heart fill up with patience and the moment and the now. So when I let go of that relationship, it was agony for six months. And then eventually I was just so euphoric and free because that void that I thought only she filled, I filled. And then when I went into the next relationship, I, if I went, in, if I went into the next relationship, I come with a full heart where I don't need the person, I love the person. And weirdly, I only aligned with someone who totally didn't need me either, who actually is so much used, more used to being independent and separated that this was an expansion for her because she was actually protective in that independence because she was so not codependent. So she went to independent and then we became interdependent, right? We became expansive together. We became beyond each other, right? So I could see beyond her and she could see beyond me. So if you are letting go of something only because you're scared you're not enough and you're trying to get it back because you don't think you're enough without it, that might not align with you. But if it's something that you realize can take you higher into your soul, into your heart, into your soul, move you beyond yourself, if it's something that will see all of you or see more of you than you're seeing in yourself, that'll honor more of you, you in all of your different moods, you in all of your career. Realize my career, I get to do all different ways. I get to make videos, I get to act in sketches, I get to do comedy, I get to do music, I get to do stand-up, I get to do advice. Every part of me is used in my career. And it didn't expand me to be in only one part of my career. It expands me to be in all of it. And you want to have relationships with people that'll expand you in all of it, that won't keep you small, but will pull you forward, right? So, um, yeah. So if you think you really need someone and your question is, how do I get that person back? Then you're in an addiction, right? That person's an addiction if you think you need them. You want to get to a place where you don't need anyone, but you choose 
and you love someone because you're whole and that person is fun to be with and it adds to your life. But if you think you're nothing without that person, then you don't know about the voids in your heart that you got to fill first. And it, that is actually stopping you from meeting you. Thank you for sharing this breakup story. I've been broken up for two months and the, uh, the addiction is getting less, but still there. Codependent history of my whole life. Codependent history of my whole life. My heart says I wasn't happy and so needy. <laughs> this is Rusty. The blanket, not the dog. Um, my heart says I wasn't happy and so needy. I'm feeling the feels, yet feeling more free every day. Beautiful. This is the one that got me. I love my husband. Husband, I was so addicted to my best friend that has just told me that she has too much going on for me. It hurts my heart. I know the anxiety and fear of losing the fun and laughter and excitement are an addiction. I am hurt. She's not good for me because I'm scared. I feel pain. Duh. <laughs> just a duh after it. So that person, that friend, that, that partner that we miss, that old job that you think is better than now, Let's take a second, let's take a few minutes and replace it with a longer heart connection. Let's get on the treadmill for longer. But I wanna know from you guys, are you willing and excited to really go deeper? You guys wanna go on the treadmill for longer than three minutes? Awesome, give me a few more. All right, let's do it. Because I wanna make sure that you guys are willing too because it's really important that you pull yourself up too. I'm not here to pull you up. I'm here to just show you, you can pull you up and get you excited about that connection. And when you do it, actually do the work, it becomes experiential and that's different than informational. Now, yesterday we did one for eight minutes. I'm going to dare this group to go 12 minutes. 12 minutes, three songs. Three songs, three songs, because this is where all the real results show up. So we're gonna do this together. That's great if you end up crying. There's power on the other side of that release. There's tears that are coming out so you can expand. So 12 minutes, we're gonna do this together. And by the way, if I do get up, that's just because I went to go pee, because you can see I'm having creation brand green juice, 50 shades of green, it's called. Just realized the, I forgot about the movie. Just, people always ask me what's in my juice. I'm gonna tell you this real quick. This 50 shades of green, then we're gonna meditate. 50 shades of green has kale, which is an anti-cancer, cucumber, weight loss, celery, which is for bladder, parsley, kidney health, lettuce for fertility, uh, dandelion for allergies, mixed green for blood pressure, basil for anti-aging, cilantro, a heavy metal detox, mint calming, spinach, which is iron, dill, bone strength, fennel for energy, green pepper for beautifying, wheatgrass for liver detox, green chili for headache relief, spirulina for brain function, and chlorophyll for anemia. I drink five of these a day and I stop eating solid food after 5 p.m. every day because that was the declaration that we had at the last Evolving Out Loud. We all declared something that we were going to do for 100 days and mine was I was going to have five green juices a day, that I would meditate two hours a day, that I would make a video, one, uh, one video a day, and that I would... Uh, I decided I wanted to stop eating after six, which would force me to go to bed earlier. But when I do go to bed, I'm not digesting a bunch of food. My body has changed drastically in the last, it's only been like a couple weeks, maybe three weeks, but my body has totally changed and I'm feeling really, really good. So this, this is from a place called creation. There are juice places that deliver. If you live in certain places that don't have juice places next to you, you can also make one. But this is a place called Creation. This drink's called Fifty Shades of Green. But there's millions of drinks that you can just make. You can get a juicer. You can put organic juice veggies in there. And boy, does your focus and your connection and your confidence all start to grow as your addictions fall off. Because you're getting connected to you and you're excited about the change in your body and your confidence and everything else. 
So I'm loving it. So I just wanted you to know I'm, I'm doing that. And just as a hopeful side advantage for you guys, uh, I just wanted you to know that's available and just remind us that we can do this a lot better if we're connected to our body, if we're eating healthy, if we, um, no, I don't own any stock and I, I still pay the ridiculous amounts of money for each one. So, so here we go. Let's do a 12 minute meditation. Now, some people are like 12 minutes and they want to drop off or they want to leave. Listen, this is where you'll actually get change. Don't be addicted to being scared. Don't be addicted to being nervous. Don't be addicted to being worried. Don't be addicted to being trapped and stuck. Let's actually do some work right now. 12 minutes is not long. It's not long at all. But this is where we're going to expand. And once again, if I'm up in the middle of this, I went pee. I didn't leave. Now, here we go. I'm wearing ridiculous pajamas. All right, here we go. So, feel the thing beating your heart. Sit in a position that's comfortable for you, but won't make you fall asleep. Sit in a position that's comfortable for you, but won't make you fall asleep. Now, you can, but you don't have to do this. You can wear beads. You can change your name to different um, types of supplements, but you don't have to. You can have a mantra, but you don't have to. All I do is just sit and watch the, watch the thoughts and pay attention to the thoughts and the heart and everything and just love it, okay? So we're gonna do this work together. So take a deep breath. Feel connected, feel appreciative that you're spending a day well lived. And now you're going to do the actual work of just being with. And I don't do anything. I'm just with it. <sighs> Connection, surrender, release, and go ahead and start. I'm sorry. I have to just say my dog literally went right at go. It's just amazing. <laughs> okay. Ready? Set. Go.
Take one more minute <clears throat> and appreciate that you're doing this because it's the best thing you can do for the world. <clears throat> it's truly the best thing you can do for the world. So thank yourself for doing the work. Just what you've just done is so amazing. So appreciate that you're here and that you got this awareness. One, one more minute. Take a deep breath and when you feel ready, open your eyes. It's a cute dog. But what about this one? They're everywhere. I want to hear from you guys what you're feeling right now. And then we're going to go to a second stage of this. This is Robbie. He's old. He's 13. Peaceful. Awesome. Acceptance, safe, calm, high is a good word. My breathing is slower. My breathing is slower and I feel relaxed. What's that doing for your blood pressure and your <clears throat> oxygen coming in? How's that affecting your brain to be paying attention to your intake and your body? When you're just here, you're breathing very shallow. A lot more patience now centered the story i've been telling myself is why i don't want a relationship is bullshit and based on an old story wow so you're having some breakthroughs too do anyone feel <clears throat> a calling something show up i gotta do this or let go of this Go outside, awesome. Of course, yeah. Take care of my health through diet, yeah. I'm gonna let go of the fear of leaping. Meditate daily with headspace, it's become essential. Be my own best friend, yeah. 
And you can only do it by doing this or creating. It's not just a mental thought, right? We got to actually do it and actually do the work that also is the action of being your own best friend, not just saying it and then doing the old way. You can see that this is actually a real thing to say connecting to yourself or making yourself first is an actual real thing. You're actually able to be so much more here for others once you understand you. So once you actually hear what you need and you feel understood, you don't need to resist other people that are trying to tell you something. You can just be very connected to you and be a space for them. So incredible. So most people live in a linear way, which means they live in their head and they're moving forward in linear and life is just what's outside of them. When you move to your heart, you start to go up. You start to transcend the old stories of life and your old beliefs and you start to go up. Now, most, a lot of people, they do this work and they go up for a second and then they go back into their head and they stay there. The real heroes to me are the ones that go up, see that this is it and go, I want to go up more. And then sometimes when they go up, they're going to feel off. So it goes like this, but then they realign and keep going up. Their direction is primarily up and not linear. So there's so many more people out there that will align with me in better ways in business and relationships. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, I have to own how toxic my mind is and accept how open, loving, expansive, brilliant my heart is. Yeah. And by the way, your mind is just a collection of what you were taught. It's not even a problem. It's not even like what your mind is, is just like things that you learned and you got to now meet the, meet it with here to like, let that child you grow up because most of the people that have a problem with something outside of them usually often also have a problem with their parents. There's something they're in resistance with their parents. Like I've had a thing forever. I wanted to get my mom's approval or, you know, my dad to pay attention to me a certain way or not yell at me or something like that. Right. We all have different things that we have. And if you still need anything for your, from your parents or you have any judgment for your parents, then they're still raising you because you're still their kid to you only as the role. But there's a you under it that's guided. There's a you that what do you want? Not what do your parents want for you or not? What are you rejecting from your, your family? or your guardians or whoever you were raised by, but what is it that you want? And you don't know that there's even a you under here because we're so busy being the acceptance of our parents or the resistance to our parents or the fighting of the people that raised us. Because when we were little kids, that's how we learned we don't get hurt or we get, someone will pay attention to me if I get in trouble. Someone will not yell at me if I stay small. We all have different ones, right? So. Everything that you want the outside to be a certain way, that's because you're trying to get it perfect so that your dad won't leave. I mean, it's crazy, but that's what it is. And if you still have a problem with your parents in certain ways, and you see them as the person you're under and you need them to change for your happiness, then they're still raising you and you're not raising you. When you go to your heart, you're going to start raising you. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So your job is to start meeting your heart and hearing what it wants because it's got guidance. It says what to do. It tells you what to do. That's the butterfly aspect of you. So yeah, mine are too, but it's less, you know? And by the way, they can have passed away. I lost my mom like three weeks ago and I lost, you know, she passed away and there's such a story under that that has been transcending, but I always thought who I was was her approval. And I, I miss her so much and I love her so much, but she, I, I really believe that, I really believe that her story passed away and my needing her approval passed away. And what's under there is me. What's under there is, the, is this me and the space and this arising coming and the real actual opportunity to actually meet my mother actually connect her connect with her so much because my mom is amazing and i've very rarely noticed it because i was always trying to get her to notice me and 
I'm now getting experiential proof that now that I don't have the physical her in my life, I get to really appreciate her now and appreciate that I got 39 years with her. She was amazing and she is amazing. So it is a huge loss. It is a huge loss, but under it, there's a thing under it. It's a loss of a story too. It's a loss of fear. It's a loss for her too. It's a loss of her baggage. And under that, there is a lot of, and in meditation, I notice I can feel connected. And that connection, I believe, doesn't die. And that connection I have with her and everyone. Now, most people wear a bunch of clothes that don't let you see their connection. So you don't get to connect there with them. You connect to the the baggage, you connect to the pain, you connect to the resistance, right? So their resistance meets your resistance. But under that, when you meditate, I notice I'm not crying. I'm, I'm okay, I feel this thing in the moment. And a lot of times it's my expectations that are hurt. I expected more time with my mom. It was a surprise she died. I expected that I would be with her more. And that's so, just shows how much I wasn't appreciating her. And if you're in a relationship, you might be expecting more time, which means you're not appreciating that you're with that person today. And if you're single, you might be thinking you should be in a relationship, which means you're not appreciating that you're single right now. And whatever your circumstances, you can fully appreciate it all the way. That's why I'm able to do this in real time with you and not scoot ahead and practice it and try to get it right because I'm actually appreciative that I get to do this for a living and do this with you guys. So... Yeah, absolutely date yourself. You totally will agree on the restaurant. Where should we go? Watch you get in a fight with yourself. I want, I want Thai. Uh, I'm feeling Mexican. You just get in an argument, just do loops around the two restaurants. Like, look, where are we going? So I want to show you guys, this is something we did yesterday. And it seems to me like uh, a lot of new people are on. So we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to do it today too. But now that you're in this space, what could you create? Because at first we broke away from the how and we moved into a why. And once you're moving from a why, then you bring in the hows. If I just say, what do I do for a career? I'm not going to find it. But if I figure out that I'm here to give my gift this way and to do comedy and to do transformation, all this stuff, then I go, how? Okay, then we go, let's rent a theater. Then we go, let's make these videos. Then we, whatever. But first I gotta find in my heart what I'm here to do. But if you have a how without a why, you're only in a how out of fear. How do I not lose that person? How do I, and the heart connection is, what did David say? I would love to date myself. I know, you're, you're gonna find it's awesome. And then when you're in a really amazing relationship, you can still totally date yourself while being with that person. They'll let you cheat on them with yourself. It's totally fine. So as you connect to your heart, you're with someone who's connected to their hearts and you each are bringing that in and it's a totally different experience. So I'm going to show you guys, um, I'm gonna show you guys a, an exercise that we do at our events that I just think is so cool. And if you did it yesterday at, on Saturday, I want you to still do it because you're gonna get a totally different experience out of it. It's something we do repeatedly at our Evolving Out Loud events. By the way, if you like these two hours, Come to an Evolving Out Loud. Come to September. It's life-changing. It's amazing. It's powerful. And wait to immerse yourself with 1,400 people for two days. You've got to come to Evolving Out Loud. It's amazing. It's the best investment you'll ever make in your time, in your heart, in your energy. You will get a whole different life out of it because you're going to come out here and you're going to have a whole plan and everything and it's amazing. So please come to Evolving Out Loud. And people fly, we've been talking about Asilomar. People have been flying out from other countries to come to Evolving Out Loud because it's amazing. So if you want to meet a bunch of really amazing people and have a weekend you'll never forget, come join us. So I want to show you um, I want to show you guys um, an exercise that we do there and it's something that I've been doing for a long time and it's an exercise that I think is so important and it's so important that our team makes an effort to do it frequently and um, this is this is what it is. It's called Kylego and Kylego is an exercise where I the reason the way it was invented was I was on my way to an audition and I was in my head about the audition. 
and I decided to see what would happen if I talked about the audition coming up as if it had already happened. So I looked at my friend in the car on my way to the audition and I said, dude, I don't know what happened, but I just got so in the zone and I was so funny and I went in there and I just knocked it out of the park and the casting director was totally in love with me and I just was so funny and I totally nailed it. And then he jumped in and was like, dude, I remember it. You were so good, you got back in the car. And it was crazy because in that moment, I was envisioning what I wanted but making it, yeah, it's Diego, who's the go part of Calego. Guess what the K-Y-L-E part is? I'm not frozen, that was just me. So, um, so Calego is this exercise we created where we started talking about the future as if it was past tense. So when I actually went to the audition, I was amazing because in my mind it had just happened. So we hear all the time to envision what you want. But when you really are doing it, you don't know if it's working. Your mind is like, I'm picturing me with this car and it's, I don't know if this works. So what happens if you make a vision past tense? If you allow yourself to create a new world for yourself and a new future as if it was past tense. Do you like how I type that with my hands here? <laughs> if you type, uh, talk about your future as if it was past tense, you allow yourself to feel it already having been done because everything that's happened in the past happened. So you don't sit here and go, that's not going to work. You're not analyzing it. So if you take a vision for what you want and you make it past tense, your mind stores it as fact because everything that happened in your past is true to you. So you don't sit there and dismiss it and say, that's just stupid. So also with this exercise, it's an opportunity for you to get into flow and to create over and over and over again, while simultaneously wiping out the fear-based thoughts because you're filling your mind and your heart with your, with your possibility thoughts, your flow. Yeah, right? It's true. So when I went to the audition, I totally nailed it. It was awesome. And then on the way home, Diego and I started talking about the rest of the day as if it was yesterday. So we go, I remember we got home and we just worked out and then we, we called those people back. And then, then later that night I went to bed and I woke up and I talked about the next day if, as if it was yesterday. So I said, I remember yesterday was the best day of my life. And I woke up and I surprised my girlfriend with flowers and took her to Disneyland. And then I did. Like I heard myself just come up with all these possibilities and then I did. So our team one time, we said, let's start Calegoing a lot. And one time we did an hour and 46 minutes into it, we came up with an idea for a new video that ended up getting a million views and then was part of what got us a New York Times bestseller on my book. My book's a New York Times bestseller. Part of it was because of Calego. I've seen people, I'm not kidding, I've seen people Calego themselves out of wheelchairs that they've been in. I had one guy, Chris Hendricks, come to our event in a wheelchair and he said, I remember the next time I saw Kyle, I walked and then he did. And now he's dating one of our ex team members. Like, I'm not kidding. He came, totally fell in love with the next team member. And then they went away and he's, they're walking away together and kissing. So anyway, so my point is that this is crazy what this does and it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. That's awesome. That's awesome. Our 13 year olds reading the book. So this opens up a world of possibilities and most people go, it doesn't work and no one does it. That's like going, I don't have any proof that the gym works because you've never seen anyone go to the gym and you haven't seen the actual physical change, but I'm telling you, I've seen it happen over and over and over and over again. And every time we do it, it works. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. If every time we do it, it works over and over and over again. So if I were to talk about this event that we're doing right now, as if it was a year ago, let's say this event, what's today's date? Today's the 25th, it's June 25th. So it's June 25th, 2017. So let's pretend like this webinar took place June 25th, 2016, a year ago. And it's been a year and now we have this total life we want. You're now, you've made the leaps you want, you've moved towards the things you want, you got, you went on the vacation you wanted, you let go of the relationship you wanted, you bought the house, you sold the house, whatever you want to do. I want you to allow yourself to pretend the ultimate life, it's a year later. So picture that this event took place a year ago and now you're there. And even if you don't know, you're going to let yourself start, 
okay? And if you don't know even what to start with, start with what you feel. Now I feel more fulfilled and impactful and I just give my gift on such another level and I feel healthier, whatever it is. So if I were to do it, I would say, dude, I remember a year ago doing the online workshop with the June 25th, 2016 people. And they were so amazing. And they were the first group out of the webinar to really, really, really actually do the work. And I remember almost every one of them, I always leave a little room to not be perfection. Two of them didn't do it. 44 of the people remaining did the actual work, did the holy crap work, stayed in their heart, moved into their heart. And because of that, they all wrote books or they make daily videos now, or they created a fan base, or they're living in the career and in the house and in the city that they want, in the relationship that they want, or in the singleness that they want. Whatever they wanted, they're in their creativity, they're doing what they want, no matter how magical it is, they all stepped into it and they didn't doubt it. And I remember our team just getting so good. I kept doing the juices and I got totally ripped. I don't know what happened, but I got totally, this got so much more skinny and buff and less fat. And then I totally did the September last event when it was the best evolving out loud that we've ever, ever, ever had. And in the last year, I wrote a second book that won another New York Times bestseller award. And we started moving award and then and a Pulitzer Prize and a Nobel, whatever. Oprah had me on her network and gave me a show. So many things happened in the last year that were just crazy. Netflix gave me a show. Netflix gave us a show. That's actually, we're talking about some stuff there. So Netflix gave us a show. And um, also when my fiance gave birth in July of last year, because we're three weeks away from having a baby, um, it was amazing. The baby was totally healthy. Christy was healthy. I was in this new place. I became this massive, awesome dad that loved being a dad. And I was so in my element, just changing the diaper like a good scene in a movie when the dad finally gets it and he's throwing it and it's off the wall and no crap sticks on the wall, just bounces into a pail. And he's got the kid on his shoulders and it's just amazing. And I'm just the best dad in the world. And I create a connection to myself and give my daughter Vivian total permission to just, you know, be herself and learn how to explore herself and teach me at the same time as I show her stuff too. And my connection to Christy is better. And Dan and Carrie and Christy and I are just ultimate friends expanding all the time and doing what we love. It's amazing. And so I get to do what I do and I love it. And now I'm in this new life where I'm this totally healthy guy that like even healthier than I ever have been. I'm doing Ironman competitions and shit, and I feel so good, and I don't know, life is just amazing, and I love it, and I feel everything. I'm about to be a dad, um, I, I, because I'm not yet, Shannon, um, so <laughs> in three weeks, in one day, um, so I know I can't wait. I bet I'm going to cry a lot. My belief is my mom did everything she could to get into her soul. That's why mom left. She said, I got to get out of here and get into that baby. And I know when my baby comes out, if she doesn't quite approve of me, my mom's in there. So <laughs> she go, oh, I don't know. We'll see. Mom, now are you proud of me? Uh, I don't know. What's it pay? So my mom, my best friend in the world, I love her so much. This is my one month of my life that I don't have one female generation on one side of me. Like I, right now I get this one alone month, lost mom, and then in one month, baby daughter Vivian. So I'm so excited and I'm so thankful for this moment too. I'm enjoying this moment right now with you guys so much. So um, would you guys like to see one other example or two other examples really quick of Calego? Because I want you to hear some other voices to just give you an idea of it. And then, okay, awesome. Can Dan and Carrie come in here, please? And you also get to meet our teammates. So Dan and Carrie are gonna come in here. Come here, mister. We gotta get out of the way. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. This is, so really quick, this is Dan and Carrie. If you don't know who they are, Carrie and Dan, <laughs> 
both ended up working for me simultaneously at the same time that I didn't know they were falling in love with each other. They're a couple, but they also, the three of us are really the core of Evolving Out Loud. Carrie runs the production, the website, the, the events, and Dan runs all our technology stuff. The videos that you see, he edits. Dan does, Dan helped me write the book. Dan um, does all the Facebook advertising. I mean, these two are so brilliant, and they're brilliant because they've made their own leaps and got in alignment with us, and we all are equally in our, our heart, and all of us are in alignment because we're each led by ourselves. So these are two of my favorite people on the planet, and um, they're adorable, and they're powerful, <laughs> and strong. Mm -hmm. The strongest. The yeah. strongest. Carrie's the strongest. <laughs> but they're really the core of Evolving Out Loud. I just show up on stage and then leave. So. So this is Dan and Carrie, and they're going to give you a little Calego for them for each of their lives, and uh, then you guys are going to do it after that. Someone asked if we live with you, and I think that's a I think that's a good question. <laughs> Can we live with you? Oh, yeah. well, it depends how this Calego goes. Okay, how this Calego goes. <laughs> I remember this last year we've just been living with Kyle and living with him. <laughs> <laughs> and we just it just went so well that Kyle had us move into his master bedroom and he moved out <laughs> um so I'll go I'll go first since I started okay uh, do you want to go first I can okay. um keep it short because it's we don't have a lot oh, of time. we don't have a lot of time okay we'll do short ones uh I remember what are we doing a month Oh, do you want to do, yeah, do you want to do a month to show them a month? Sure. Yeah, a month. Um, so, I... so tell them into the mic that this is a month. So you're doing it like it's a month. Oh, uh, we're doing it a month long, Kalego. I remember uh, this month, um, I remember this month really tapping into meditation in a whole new level. Um, I found some new insights and I found um, insights of really just um, becoming curious and um, I allowed that to to be what it was to um, to show me different things and a deeper connection to myself and I really uh, tuned into my own intuition my own um, guidance system and really tapping into a deeper, um, a deeper knowing, knowing that the answers are always there and that all it takes is a moment to check in and to ask myself and to connect deeper with what that answer is, what that true knowing is. And so this month has been a huge shift in my life in external things in um, my creativity and getting into silks even deeper up uh, i do aerial silks and just doing that more in a more creative and more committed way and um i'll leave it at that I'll keep it quick awesome love it um i remember that and um this month i remember this month really being the month that i broke out of the gravitational pull of my old story and addictions and habits and things that were serving maybe my my egoic self but not serving the whole and I broke into the gravitational pull of my universal alignment and you know my truth and started to get addicted to the things that that were in alignment and that were serving the world and so the things that that were beneficial to the world became so natural to me. And so meditation became this thing that was like breathing. And my med meditation started to go so deep and were so effortless that they even broke, they broke out of the practice of meditation. And so I went into this new dimension where each moment was this meditation in terms of I was just growing into a space where every moment was so accepted and so loved. And there was a realization that each moment, even ch you know, challenging moments or good moments or whatever it was, was just something that was exposing and opening up a new part of myself. And so this month was, it was just a living meditation. And um, it has put me into a place now 
where I feel like everything that I'm doing is acting from this universal intelligence, this universal guidance. And I've really stepped out of the way and just become a tool for that guidance to start to work in this world. And um, that has given, the crazy thing about that is that that has given my, my personal self more success, more energy, more excitement, more good feelings than, you know, tw 31 years of trying to gratify that personal self. And the moment that I've let that go is the moment that it's all come into my life, you know, full force. Um, so this month has been the merging of those two things. It's been stepping into that universal alignment and finally integrating that personal egoic self into that higher perspective and that, that soul vision that's always there guiding me. Hell yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. So that's Dan and Carrie, everybody. Give Dan and Carrie, um, I don't know what to a give them, a, a bunch of exclamation points. I don't. Um, so awesome. So that's Dan and Carrie. You're getting rounds of applause. Awesome. So realize that you can do it with whatever. Someone wrote something about I'm feeling too much pressure of living up to my Calego. Listen, undo your expectations of it because something new wants, wants to come through now. Don't give yourself pressure. That's your mind already pr deciding what it's supposed to be like and creating a thing. Calego is here so that you can like hear what you want. And amazing job, both of you. That was great. So what I want you guys to do is I want to know from you, are you guys ready to do one more treadmill work and actually experientially do this? Can you give me one more I'm in? Give me a yes or a something like that. Awesome. I'm just watching them all. Great. So it's so exciting just to see that we're all doing it together. So here's what you're going to do. We're going to go back to it's a year later. So in other words, this event took place one year ago. And if you're by yourself, I want you to take a recorder out so that you can feel like you're saying it into something. This is like quickly doing a diary. And you're going to just record audio if you can. Um, so grab on your phone if you have it, just some type of recorder. And go ahead and speak into it. And allow yourself to, first of all, be totally willing to do it wrong. Okay? Don't, you might not know how to start. And then if you, if you feel blocked, if you feel stuck, say, I feel stuck, and then go, and I love that. Because your problem isn't that you're stuck. Your problem is that you believe that you shouldn't be stuck, right? So once you start loving it, you make space for the new stuff to come through. So you start out and you go, I remember now that it's a year later, now I get to do this thing, and I love doing this thing, and blah, blah, blah. Or you could even start with, or you could combine these, but you could also start it with what you did right after you got off the webinar. You could go, right when I got off the webinar, I called that person and forgave them. Or I went to bed and the next morning I, went, I woke up way earlier than usual and I went right to the gym and I just started meditating every single day. And it's been a hundred days later, or it's been a year later and I've meditated every single day for an hour a day before I started the day. And now everything in my life has transcended. I'm over those addictions. I have this new life. I've made more money. I'm impacting people. Or you can go into what you feel. Yeah, so that's what I want you to do. So you're gonna take a recorder. Now, if you have a partner in the room, if they're willing and have been paying attention to this, I mean, I wouldn't just run to a stranger and do this that doesn't know what you're doing. You just look nuts. But if you have someone in there that knows what you're doing, look at them and do it. You're gonna do it for not too long. And then when we're done doing this webinar, which is we're gonna be done with the whole thing in 10 minutes. So when we're done with it, they can do it back. So right now only one of you is going to do it. So we're just gonna take a few minutes and I'll time it for you. It's gonna be five minutes total. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your recorder and you're gonna pretend it's now a year later, what's the ultimate life you want? And you're gonna allow yourself to just start, be willing to do it wrong and just say what your new life is and what you did to get there. And and, and everything you're doing now. So you're gonna hear yourself say the breakthroughs. So are you ready? Set, <laughs> ready, set, go. And I'll come back.
All right, time. That's five minutes. Hi, two boys. Um, that's time, everybody. So I would love to hear from you guys what you got out of that. Hi, Sage and Finley. Nice to see you guys. Um, really quick, write down, we only got a few minutes left. It's a pretty amazing exercise, isn't it? And so I'd love to hear from you guys if you got a, a specific thing, if you felt something might be easier. Um, awesome, I was getting excited about my life again. Every time my colleague always end up saying, that was amazing, I didn't even know I wanted that. That's exactly right, because you can only see what your ego wants, not what your soul wants. What to do when you do that and a fear sneaks in and it won't, uh, well, I'm gonna read the rest, hold on. It reassures me that I'm headed on the right path. What do you do when you do that and a fear sneaks in that it won't work? So you keep going. It showed up, so it will work. Where do you think that came from? That came from somewhere. It, and what does work mean? They might not like it. I've done it and I could get a vision and it'd be like, you ask the person out and then you ask the person out and, and they say no. That doesn't mean it didn't work. You were still supposed to do it. You were supposed to learn how to do it. It had nothing to do with the outside. It's about the inside. My husband's Calego had him editing Kyle's new book. Awesome. Awesome. It makes me feel inspired for what's next. Feeling connected, bigger purpose. Effortlessly connecting with amazing people. Seeing the best in people. Beautiful. Uh, Calego newbie. Awesome. I was crying tears of happiness because it was just so, I was in ease. The words flowed as I talked about how my husband and I were creating a podcast together. Wow. The more I did it, the easier it felt. Exactly. I promise you, you do this 20 minutes, you do this 30 minutes, and you will go to a different channel. It's a whole different thing. And my dare to you guys is when you get off here to do it for, again for a lot longer because now you're already on a different channel. Um, don't, yeah, don't get attached to the outcomes. Sure, use them to move you forward, but it's about your transformation. So I just felt like my dreams and goals aren't so huge. Yeah, in other words, you stepped up to bigger to where they are. So now, that was just to show you that. So that's beautiful. Now here, I want to ask you guys something. I have a theory that every one of us has a Martin Luther King in us, a Gandhi in us, an Oprah in us. We're all that powerful. And you can tell from these exercises that you have it. So it's a choice if you do it. And I always think to myself, what would happen if a thousand Martin Luther Kings showed up at the same time? The world would shift in a, in a heartbeat. So if 20% of the people on this call would be, which is nine people, if 20% stepped into their greatness and really chose to dedicate some time to making these exercises and your journaling and your video series and all those things first, more, more important than getting love from the outside, we would shift the planet really fast. So my question to you is, who's in and committed to actually shifting their heart and making their heart first through work, you know, through exercises, through meditation, through Calego, let me know if you're in right now because I get so excited about our dedication because I'm not looking for followers, I'm looking for co-leaders. And if you are doing it, then we're going up together because I'm not here to pull you up. We're pulling each other up and we're guiding ourselves all the way to shifting the planet because what we need is a higher level of consciousness. So this thing's going to automatically shut off in 20 seconds. So I need you to know I'm in love with you guys. This was hands down our favorite webinar we've ever had very memorable we recorded it we're going to put it out and send it to you guys um, and we're just thankful for you